This is a video about RDM mappings, or pass-through. So we've got this old article I wrote in 2011. And back then I had a choice. Do I want to pass through a USB connection from this external RAID controller? Sorry, external RAID enclosure to a USB controller in my ESXi box, where you pass through um, a port on the USB 3 controller card? Or do I want to just use an eSATA cable and use something called raw device mappings to pass it through, right there, raw device mappings. So I'm gonna go with this approach. So that's really my cheat sheet for the commands that are needed. And over here, I'm gonna go ahead and perform this task. It's gonna get a D drive attached, so I don't really need a command prompt to do anything in Windows 10 just yet. I really need putty. Okay, so now I'm on the ESXi server. Right there under my mouse, same host I just puttied into or SSH'd into. Now what we have to do is find the drive, the identifier for the drive specifically. So let's have a look around here. Notice type ahead works. And if we do that, we can go in and do an LSL on the disks. So the six terabyte is the one I wanna see. So where is the six terabyte Western Digital Red? Shouldn't be too hard to find, it's right under my mouse. So I'm gonna mouse my way across that. All right, so now I've got it in my clipboard. That's the hard part, that's really it. The rest is just typing out a command. So let me explain. Whoops. All right, what do we have here? Well, I made a folder called RDM now. So I'll make this look as much as possible like the screenshot on the right. Okay, so that's the drive I'm mapping. Then hit space. I right click to paste it. I hit space. And here's where things get interesting. You can hit tab. Oh, you can, sorry. I hit eight and then tab and it worked. Okay. And then I made a folder called RDM. Notice if I type RD and hit tab, it auto completes it. And now I can call it something like that looks right to me. So I'm going to hit enter. Now, how do we know if it worked? Well, And how about a dash L for details and dash H for human readable? So we see the size of things. 5.5 terabytes is what it's saying that first file is. It's not though, it's a lie. It's really just a representation of the actual huge six terabyte drive. So how do we get that into the VM? Uh, that's pretty easy. This VM is already booted. All I gotta do is add a secondary drive, which will become D, say, hey, Go in and find an existing disk. Notice raw device mappings is blanked out. That's talking about a SAN. I'm not using a SAN. I am using a raw device mapping, but it's not on a SAN. So it'll become clear to you why I'm clicking next shortly here. We browse our way to the thing we just made, the entity, the mapping file. It says five terabytes. I guess it's rounding way down. It's 5.8, but whatever. Hit next. Now it is independent. You're not gonna be snapshotting this. In fact, you can't snapshot it. It represents a physical drive. Uh, but I'm gonna leave that alone because it. if you try to snapshot this VM, it's not gonna be able to touch that anyway. I think it'll refuse to snapshot, period, once you attach an RDM mapping like this. 
All right, now let's check out what happens in the VM. If we go to disk management, disk management, I do not want to write a signature to it. I'm actually trying to recover some data off of there using a Windows utility. And that's not good. Well, okay. It didn't write a signature to it. Never mind, because it's ext4 formatted. Notice it's not saying NTFS, and I can't browse it. So everything's fine. All right. So remember, I said my whole intent is to see the 6 terabyte drive. Well, that was easy. So a company named Disk Internals makes something called VMFS Recovery. And that lets you scan a drive to see what good stuff, if any, it can find left on there. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and install this utility. And the point here is we can throw multiple tools or you know multiple tricks up my sleeve for how to work on a drive kind of forensically without altering it or touching it. And we can do it with Windows, we can do it with Linux and another VM. And um, I actually have one like that. Here's a recovery VM, it's Ubuntu. And it's a, a live CD that does not need install. All right, um, back to the one we we're working on. We seem to have lost the consoles, hang on a second. Get that back, there we go. a cleaner look and a much larger view. Okay, I'm launching the tri trial version of Disk Internals VMFS Recovery. I don't really want this wizard to show every time. All right, what do we see here? Uh, we see a Linux volume, we see a C drive. So I'm gonna go for Linux, eh, no. I wanna go to the physical layer. I'm actually trying to find what's left after a light format. So let me explain. I'm looking for VMFS file systems on the physical drive. And I'm gonna disable search so it goes faster. Now I can let this run overnight. It takes, I think, 10 hours. But the strange thing is I can also cancel right here and I might be able to get a glimpse of what happens if I let this thing run all night. So I'm aborting the current operation. It's building a file tree. And we hit next. And I'm now looking at the contents of the drive. If I double click this, what do you know? Something actually comes up. And specifically, there's a 5.8 terabyte folder in here. Let's see if there's a details view here. And that's the one. So the target that I'm trying to recover is right here. Now, if you try to go and just save it now, well, I've got an issue for, I need space for it, but also I've got to buy the product, I can't license it. So I'm just using the trial. Okay. And the other thing I'll point out here is, you can actually double click the VMDK and say mount a system. So if you want to preview what might be in here, all right, that didn't work. But anyhow, if, if, if the product was able to mount the VMDK and see inside the NTFS within, that could be another promising sign that it would be uh, you know maybe worthwhile to license the product. So anyhow, that's, that's my quick look at this. I'm going to uh, close down this video with kicking it off one more time. So if we go to start menu, we go ahead and, whoops, pin that. You can also um, pin that to the taskbar. And we'll launch it. And that wizard should not come up since we said no thank you in the checkbox. It didn't. And remember, we 
I simply double click on the physical drive, say VMFS, next, disable search, and then let her rip. And in the past, I've been able to then mount the VMDK and then see the NTFS within. So that's it. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. And thank you for visiting tinkertry.com.